Okay? The IGPF will be providing daily updates of crimes and occurrences under the Emergency Powers Act for the seven days of curfew. We started yesterday, continuing this morning, and we will continue for the next few days. We have sent you a link that gives you all of the days um, access to the program, and we trust that you will sign on with the link provided to you without us having to send you a link daily. This morning, I have with me Superintendent John Charles and ASP Holly George, and we will be talking this morning about the past and its process and procedures. But before we do, I will give you some update as it relates to crime statistics over the last 24 hours. From 6 a.m. yesterday morning to 6 a.m. this morning, we had 14 arrests, 14 arrests made by the RDPF. 11 of those arrests were for violation of the curfew, and there were three persons arrested for other related minor crimes. To split the parish for you for these arrests, eight of those 11 happened at the St. George area, and three at St. John's. Eight St. George, three St. John's. So 14 persons arrested overnight, 11 for coffee violation, and eight for other minor uh, criminal offenses. Yesterday as well, I did say to you that having regard to the video that was circulating in social media regarding the threats to the Prime Minister and that of law enforcement, that the RGPF will leave no stone unturned in finding those who are responsible. I'm happy to report this morning that there are three persons in custody assisting with that investigation. We are confident that some action uh, might be taken. We are consulting with the Director of Public Prosecution's Office as I speak, and sometime during the course of the day, or whenever that directive is given, I will update the public as to where we are with those with that investigation. Yesterday also, I reported the fact that there was an alleged murder which occurred at the Boca, St. George area, and that there are a number of persons in custody assisting with that investigation. That investigation is continuing, and the police continue to work feverishly to ensure that we can bring the perpetrators to justice. At this point, I'm going to turn over to Superintendent John Charles, who will give you uh, some information as regard to how you can apply for a pass. The Emergency Powers Act regulation stipulates who can be exempted from the curfew and give that responsibility to the Commissioner of Police to issue passes to persons who are not listed in the legislation so that they can move about. A pass needs to be applied for, and to talk about the application process will be Superintendent John Charles, assisted by Assistant Superintendent Holly George. I will turn over to them now, after which we will take your questions. Process for application for passes. For the past few days, we have been receiving many, many passes from different sectors of society. And as we move on, we would like to advise the general public that when applying for pass, the procedure is first, you think about what you want to apply for, and you send the application to rgpf at spicel.com. The application will come to the Secretariat at Police Headquarters. It will be perused and considered and it will be printed, signed, scanned, and returned to the sender in most cases. We have a number of persons applying for passes in the area of farming. We have caregivers. We have business community owners. We have people with pets and many other areas that require attention during the period of the the implementation of the Emergency Powers Act. For the farmers, what we are requiring from you is that you give the following details. You must give your name, where you live, the location of your lands or your animals, a contact telephone number, and how frequent you would like to visit those locations. You also have to state if there will be anyone else accompanying you to those locations. For caregivers, we need your name and the location of your place. 
some caregivers, we may advise that you may need to sleep in for the period and move when the curfew is released. Business owners, we understand that they must go to the premises to check, mostly on a daily basis, on the chill rooms and freezers to ensure that there may not be any loss of perishable items. We have a lot of persons in the community with pets that is at a different location to where they live. It depends on the situation. We may ask that you relocate the pet or even you relocate yourself to where the pet is so we will restrict too much movement. The notification of approval will go from police headquarters via email back to the applicant who will then print a copy and carry with them whenever they move. For farmers, what you will do, you will contact the nearest police station to you, give your name and address, and they will guide you accordingly. Any contact to be made with police headquarters following this will be from the station closest to you. I would also like to remind members of the public that all passes must be approved by the Office of the Commissioner of Police. There, be, there may be many applications coming to the Secretariat, but I must warn you that not all applications may be approved. Based on the circumstances, you have to determine because if we are to give everyone passes to move, that will be defeating the purpose of the restrictions. And as you know, the enemy we are fighting is one that is in, invincible. We cannot see. We don't know where it is at. So we have to restrict the movement for the protection of everyone in this country. At this time, I would like to hand over to ASP Holly Judge, who will continue to give us some more information. I just want to reiterate at this time that the spirit of the act is to preserve the Grenadian life by tonakitting the spread of the COVID-19 coronavirus. And for this reason, the Emergency Powers uh, <coughs> COVID-19 Act of 2020 facilitates the control movement of key business organizations and institutions to ensure a measure of stability. So, sections two, subsection two of the of the act caters for, and I want to read it. The regulation shall not apply in the case of medical emergency. So, where a person has a medical emergency and has to move, for that reason, will be facilitated by the police. Section 5 covers the closure of business and exemptions, and that is where stores are allowed to be opened and suppliers, business suppliers, are allowed to apply to the Commissioner of Police under Section 5B um, for the purpose of uh, uh, facilitating them to provide supplies. Section 5H deals with licensed security businesses so that security guards can continue to provide that service. Section 7 deals with the issue of essential workers. And this is where Superintendent John Charles was speaking to the, the, the farmers and the caregivers. But, all such applications, as he alluded to, must be submitted in writing to the Commissioner of Police uh, to facilitate uh, such movements. And um, you can send your, your emails. We're taking applications through emails to avoid a movement of people um, at rgpf at spicel.com. So at this time, we'll open up for questions from, from the media.
Remember to me, yeah, that of course, yes, we'll follow the usual protocol. By lifting your hands, we'll recognize you and let you know that when you're on. So who will be first this morning? Questions from the media? And the questions are not necessarily confined to the presentation this morning. Rina Pierre, you are recognized. Yes. Um, my first question is related to the Bible study that we had Um, what I can say to you, what I can say to you, Rina, is the fact that our operation is strategic in nature. So when you might see a roadblock today, you may not necessarily see a roadblock. Then tomorrow, that roadblock might move for strategic reason. But yes, to answer the first part of your question, our roadblocks are for 24 hours, but it can move. Okay, also I wanted to ask, could you tell me, um, the person that were arrested over the 24 hours, what they were arrested for? 11 of the 14 persons was arrested for violation of the curfew, and 3 of the persons were arrested for other minor criminal offenses. Okay, understanding that there are particular days for shop owners, local shop owners, to cater for Canadians, um, as it relates to the passing for the suppliers, would the suppliers be able to supply the shop throughout the week on specific days as well? The suppliers can only move on the day that the shops will be open. So on days that are shopping days, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, the suppliers can move on those days to resupply those shop. And I'm glad you asked this question because on another program this morning, uh, people were asking about supplying the village shops. The suppliers do apply for the permission and they can move on the days that the shops will be open. Uh, there are two questions that we want to answer uh, via messages that were sent in. The first one asks, good morning, uh, what measures are in place for persons, especially farmers, who do not have access to computers to send in the application? What do they do? Mr. Charles or Mr. George, we'll take this question. Okay, in a case like that, what, what uh, the farmer will do is to contact the nearest police station to, to them, and then we'll handle it from there. <laughs> We have seen uh, some creativity. Some farmers have contacted persons who have that medium. So we have seen applications of that sort. And some persons would have used uh, their cell phone as well um, to create um, such a, an application. There is another question uh, someone is asking. Can you explain if a pass is to be used by a designated person or different people can use the same pass? The question is whether different people can use the same pass, one pass being used by multiple people. Regarding the pass and, and um, whole of passes, if you have a group of people accessing the same location, they will get the pass in the form of a letter that will include all the persons who are required to travel names. And once they are traveling by groups, one person will have possession of that letter with all names to show at any checkpoint. Example, um, you have a lot of um, caregivers. Sometimes they work in clusters and they might have five or more persons working at the same location. So the, the names will be included in one pass and they will carry along that with them whenever they move. Any other questions from the media? I, I have a question. Yes, Mr. Hutchison, you are recognized. Okay. I have had a conversation with a farmer who says that upon receiving the passes, a limited time to access the farm was given. I cannot validate that information, but I just want you to clarify that to us, please, as to whether or not farmers are required to be on the farm for a specific period of time once they are granted these passes. The time allotted for farmers to visit the, the farm is between the hours of 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. 
we, we decided that this is enough time for them to do what they have to do on the farm and return home. If they have any further queries or things they would like to do on the farm, they, they will have to contact the nearest police station, as I said before, and that will be discussed and considered. Chair Noel, you recognize? It has to do with our small shops. Um, some of them are asking that because they would have sold so much of the items on Wednesday, and well, it was limited time between 8 and 12, and then the, the businesses who reimburse them also have between 8 and 12 in order for it to restock. How would that be feasible for them? Being as you know, it's a same, a same four hour block that they would have to move from shop to shop to restock them. Uh, what is that? What we do not want to do, we do not want to extend the days for people to be moving about. Remember, this is a, a, a 24 hour coffee room. And if we want to make exception or too much exceptions, we will be defeating the purpose. So while it might be inconvenient for some uh, shop owners, this is the condition that currently exists, and this is the condition that they will have to work with. The day that shops are opening is also the days that the suppliers can move around to resupply those small shops. Because giving another day to the suppliers is actually making the coffee null and void in some sense. Uh, Rina. Rina? Rina Pierre? Yes, I have a couple of questions. Um, one, as it relates to essential workers and the use of teller machines, are they allowed to? Because the uh, officer did stop an essential worker um, from using a teller machine yesterday. Um, and also, what about training and police to operate dealing with some of um, well, dealing with the situation now for some of the police, especially the younger ones, because we um, it also had an altercation yesterday where one of the essential workers' um, documents were um, destroyed by an officer. To answer your first question first, Rina, <clears throat> it stands to reason that if a day is given as a grocery day or a shopping day, people would need to, need to access monies to be able to shop. So once you're out of your home for the shopping days, it is understood that you need to use the teller in some cases to be able to get the necessary cash to be able to purchase what, what you need. So definitively to answer your question, yes, you're allowed to use the ATM. There is no restrictions on the ATM. There is restrictions on the movement of people. And on that day, the coffee was given it eased by four hours to allow people to go to the ATM, get the cash, and make whatever purchases that they do need to make. I think there was another question that you asked. Yes. Um, well, another question is the training for the young officers that relates to how they're dealing with persons regarding a situation that happened yesterday with an essential worker um, document being um, destroyed and complaints of being misusing their powers. Um, to answer this question, I, I believe that um, anyone encountering this type of issues, what they should do on this part is to ask for a supervisor and have a discussion with the supervisor. So the matter can be resolved. There is a question we have on our Facebook page that asks who is responsible for monitoring those that are asked to uh, self-quarantine. Um, the Ministry of Health, in conjunction with the police, have some responsibility to do that. But I want to uh, implore to the public that if you know someone should be self-quarantined and they are not, we do want to know about it. This curfew is about preventing the spread of the COVID-19 virus. And we all have our part to play. The Ministry of Health is playing their part. Law enforcement, we are playing our part. The citizens of Grenada need to play their part. So if you see something that you think we need to know, please let us know. And Rina, the question that you have asked, if police officers are behaving in an unprofessional manner, we want to know that as well. We do have a mechanism in place to investigate and discipline our own. We have been doing this, and we will continue to do that. 
Um, Mr. Hutchison, you had a, you had your hand up. Do you have a question, sir? Yes, I, I want to go back to uh, one of the statements you made earlier regarding the video that was in circulation. You said three persons were in police custody, um, assisting police in the investigation with regard to that particular video? Three persons are in police custody, yes. Okay. Chairman? Yes, um, my question has to do with the application you said send it via the email. What I want to know is once that email is sent, what's the response time period? Response time. Um, the response time would vary because as it is now, we have a lot of application coming in. So what we are advising that if you didn't receive any response within maybe 24 hours, you can contact the nearest police station to you, and then we will try to see how we can expedite it. But we have a lot of application we are attending to. Uh, just a, a, a follow-up, um, is that for a standard one and um, a, for the passes, and is it um, retrievable from the RGTF Facebook page, an email, or so? No, the, the form is not standard because everybody's situation will be different. So we review each application on a case-by-case -case basis, then we give an approval. So it's, um, I'm just trying to get clarity. So it's actually um, somebody requesting via a letter permission rather than there is an actual form that you fill in and send in? Exactly, and that issue, the email address of the Irish PF. Okay, so there is no application form. You send no, an email. You design your own application form with all the details required. Okay, so I think that that was a problem because they were actually looking to find out where can they access that particular application form. So that's for the clarity. Yeah. I want to address a question that is being sent in to us regarding marketing board and whether or not any uh, provisions are in place for marketing board on the days that shops are opening. Now, we have to appreciate that this is the RGPF, and we are responsible by and large for law enforcement. RGPF, as a, sorry, a marketing board as a statutory body, have to decide if they want to open and whether or not they will need a pass or permission so to do. So um, I'm not in a position to answer for businesses and why they're opening or if they're open and whether or not they, they make an application or not. Businesses will have to make that determination. If they do not fall under one of the exceptions, then they need to make an application for permission so to do. Uh, there is a question that somebody is asking, was the police informed about the COVID-19 person who left the island? I can uh, confirm here that some information was received and your, the answer to the question is yes, we were at some stage informed. Uh, Mike Yerson? I, I remember the, um, I believe it was the commissioner stating that the gas station uh, for the refill of the essential workers was going to be identified for the north uh, side of the island. I, I'm not sure if that information was already published or made available to the public. Um, that information has not yet been made uh, available, but I can, I can uh, assure you that much more than the north is currently being considered. There are a number of proposals at the table um, to make more than one gas station open at some point. That is still being discussed at the upper level, and when that information becomes available, we will make it available to the public. Rina Pia? Yes, um, just a little bit on the relates to the gas station again. Understanding that we had a suggestion at um, Depot Industry yesterday. Also, I know that that industry also sells cooking gas. Now, the only gas they sell is rubies, and there are persons who would like cooking gas at their home from Sol and Spice Gas, which is the colored one. Um, if anything is related to that, it's a for Canadians, because while we have a lot of people buying gas or more than what they have been doing, there are other people who get advertised. So, how is that being okay? Really, I think this is purely common sense on, the, on behalf of the people who desire of acquiring those gas. It is a shopping day for grocery, and we will consider gas an essential uh, um, item. Uh, and so, 
On those days that are set aside for shopping, of course people should be able to be allowed to go to get their cooking gas. This is an essential item. So I don't think police officers will restrict or prevent you from doing that on those days. Any other questions? If not, we want to thank you again for joining us. Tomorrow morning at 8.30, we will be on again. The link that we have sent to you will cover a few days, so we do not have to send the link again. So you will sign on, sign on to the appropriate day for the brief. And so we will see you tomorrow morning at 8.30. My name is Barney Corwin, Superintendent in charge of Community Relations Department. And with me this morning is Superintendent John Charles and Assistant Superintendent Holly George. Thank you, and have a great day. In December 2019, there was a cluster of pneumonia cases in China.